Armed police eventually arrived at the remote spots, and a man who's described as six foot three, blonde, and a native Norwegian speaker was arrested. The attacks appear to be a coordinated Mumbai style assault, a deadly attention grabbing explosion in the capital, and then another horrific attack on the country's youth. Police have sealed off the whole area. They're only letting the families of the victims through. So the it is unclear who's responsible for either attack, but suspicion has already fallen on Al-Qaeda or one of its affiliates. But it is still possible that this was carried out by a homegrown terrorist group with a far-right agenda. The Norwegian Prime Minister, whose office was damaged, was not in the capital at the time, but he was meant to be talking at the summer camp. We are a little nation, but we are a stolt nation. We are a small country, but a very proud country. No one can bomb us to be quiet. No one can shoot us to be quiet. No one can ever scare us from being Norway. Norway is an enthusiastic member of NATO and is taking part in operations in Afghanistan and Libya. If this is found to be an Al-Qaeda plot, it may be because Norway is viewed as a softer target than the United States or Britain. I think Norway in many ways is, is, is a fairly naive country when it comes to security and threats. But what I mean about that is, is, is that you wouldn't have uh, the same uh, barricades around the government buildings in Oslo as you would here in London. And you wouldn't have the same level uh, uh, of security and access is, is, is quite uh, good. So when you look at this bomb that went off just in the middle of the government square, it couldn't be positioned anywhere uh, uh, to create more harm within the government. For now, the focus is on the possibility of more explosions. The centre of Oslo has tonight been evacuated as Norway prepares itself for further attacks. <laughs> more thought now about these very unfortunate events let's uh, talk to radio host and author Stephen Lenman he's joining us on the line from Chicago Mr Lenman hi there thanks for being on our team as these awful events unfold I know you're watching from your side of the pond as well and we've already heard unconfirmed claims by that group calling themselves the helpers of the global jihad that this attack is a direct response to the presence of Norwegian forces in Afghanistan do you think that sounds like a realistic claim a realistic theory Kevin, I have written on numerous events, numerous individuals falsely charged, numerous official stories changed by later evidence. Can I give you some examples, both in America and Europe, both World Trade Center bombings in America, we know about 9-11, the evidence is overwhelming that the 9-11 attack itself was a false flag. Most people forget about the 1993 bombing. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of people were convicted. Uh, I wrote about one, Sheikh Abdul Rahman, the so-called blind Sheikh. He was completely innocent. He got life in prison. He was a former CIA asset. They brought him to America. The Oklahoma City bombing in 1995, Terry Nichols, Timothy McVeigh, a truck bomb in front of the uh, federal building in Oklahoma City. It was later proved that the truck bomb did relatively minor damage. Most of the damage came from internally rigged explosives. Okay, yeah, I mean, we've we heard the conspiracy theories about 9-11 before, and I've taken everything you say there. So, I mean, what are you saying about what's happened here tonight? I mean, details are still very, very sketchy, and, I've, you know, uh, this, this is happening as people are still under the, under the ruins there tonight. So what do you think has gone on then? Well, of course, uh, the event just happened today. We have no way of knowing, and it, it could be days, it could be weeks before we know anything. But my advice to viewers is 
always be suspicious, especially about a major attack. I'm sure your viewers remember the uh, the underground bombing in London, the Madrid train bombing, I believe, uh, the year before or the year after, uh, the mid the mid 2000s. Uh, the the early stories were all wrong. Uh, the later stories conflicted with them, presented different evidence, and it looked like both of those events were false flags. So again, we don't know what happened today. I'd be very suspicious. And there are clues, Kevin. There are clues. Let's see how fast information comes out. Let's see if people are charged. Let's see exactly what is said. And if too much official information is reported too fast, those are red flags. Because any event like this could take weeks, maybe months, to really find out what went on. If in the next day or two or a week, we get flooded with information and names named, those those are red flags that something is very, very wrong. Steve. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Saturday, July 23rd, 2011. I'm Darko, this is part two of this news bulletin, everyone. ggnonline.com is my website. That's www.ggnonline.com. My YouTube channel is ddarko2012, and you can also check me on uh, Facebook, I have a Global Government News group. You can check that out and network blogs all the way at the bottom of my website down here. You can click on that. Um, other than that, uh, just go through, in case you're just joining me, this poll that's been up here. You have three days left to vote. Would you consent to entering an airport body scanner now that an image is, quote, no longer produced, if you believe that? But uh, everyone's saying so far, a couple more people have voted since the last video. Uh, 100%, 19 voters saying no, they will not. Okay, so uh, you just saw that uh, those videos there, the do face of terror. That was the first one from the Herald Sun. And it says here, death toll rises in Norway, a possible second gunman. So it says Norwegian man suspected in a bombing and shooting spree that killed at least 92 people. And at first, the number was 91. It was kind of interesting, the, num the, the just numbers throwing out there. Uh, uh, 91 people plus one killer, 9-11, I've heard that, but uh, now the numbers are changing, unfortunately, uh, going higher. It says here, he bought six tons of fertilizer, mm, just like uh, Timothy McVeigh, right, before the massacre, the supplier said Saturday, as police investigated witness accounts of a second shoot. And this happens a lot, uh, a lot of these uh, weird events where there's a lone gunman, there always seems to be another person at the scene uh, or uh, previous cases. In other words, these individuals are actually getting help, and I'm not talking about a, a terrorist network. I'm talking about the uh, the, the state, the government themselves, uh, that allow this or carry out or fund these attacks in order to do what they did, which is the Norway uh, Norwegian uh, leader saying, "We will not be shaken. We will be strong," and um, it's just crazy. So it says here, Norway police fear a second Utoya uh, attack gunmen might be at large. Says report. And just a side note here, remember what they were saying in that first video, the guy towards the end of that video, um, he was saying that they were, it was basically Islamic militants attacking them because they had a soft target and because they were big and enthusiastic about the war on terror. But no, they're not. They're, I mean, I don't, I, I don't think that they are. They seemed like they were kind of against that, uh, uh, you know, a growing, a growing uh, um, group of people in Norway and in Scandinavia in general, so it's kind of more disinfo you got to pay attention to. It says, further unconfirmed reports have suggested that a second, second gunman was involved in Friday's shooting rampage on Norway's uh, uh, Yatoya Island, which occurred shortly after the bomb attack in downtown Oslo. So uh, go in there and check that out. We'll see first reports. Of course, they're going to come out here and say there wasn't a second gunman. But it says uh, here, down here, Mr. Uh, Stoltenberg, the prime minister of Norway, said he was deeply touched by the meetings. He said uh, earlier uh, that he was due to have been there. So see, he wasn't even there. Oh, just another uh, coincidence, right? Norwegian killer linked to Tea Party and EDL. So uh, just uh, more tying, uh, more uh, attempts to tie it to uh, conservatives. And that Oslo bomb suspect brought six or bought six tons of fertilizer, says the supplier. So again, uh, they're just, just trying to mount a case here. Uh, and it says here, the shooting came on the heels of what police told the AP was a, quote, Oklahoma City-type bombing. So that's the buzz term, Oklahoma City-type bombing, which infers what? Right-wing radicalism. And uh, you saw that FEMA video. So everything happens in unison, whether it's uh, in Europe or in North America. It all happens 
at the same time that's how you know it's a global uh, basically a global plan or operation a PSYOP, false flag, whatever you want to call it. But it says the Oklahoma City type bombing in Oslo's downtown. It targeted a government building, um, which, you know, McVeigh, like being a patsy, thought he was doing something good, taking down real terrorists. It says he was allegedly perpetrated by a homegrown asylum. And uh, it says here, and use the same mix of fertilizer and fuel that blew up a federal building in the U.S. in 1995. Which then, what, they clamped down on domestic uh, militias and all that. Lone Nut Tea Party, Freemason, cop, terrorist, kills liberal children in Norway. So weird coincidence. No, not the fact that Norway was just about done with the NATO war in Libya. It says uh, the coincidence worth underscoring here in the U.S. is the curious timing of the U.S. motherland home uh, Homeland Security announcing its white racist teabagger program just days ago and now a man fitting that description a lone nut Timothy McVeigh mass killer of Oslo. He goes down here just a few other things witnesses alleged shooters wearing a uh, dress as a policeman and um, the shooters Facebook and Twitter or CIA pages were brand new so it said uh, that earlier he listed interests including bodybuilding conservative politics and Freemasonry. And of course, it was all taken down, and it's just like the uh, DC shooter and um, uh, other individuals that have had websites, um, the hootery and that, the militias, uh, mostly false flag attacks, and usually the websites will come down almost immediately before uh, intelligent people start to go investigate it. Analyzing the Oslo attacks, terrorist event, or false flag distraction, and then referring to the Israeli spy ring that was operating in New Zealand, and it was covered, uh, it was uncovered uh, from the Christchurch earthquake, so now they're trying to uh, distract from that. Prefabricated fascists, the FBI's assembly line provocateurs, and uh, it goes on here talking about uh, uh, Vahala at work, FBI uncover asset Hal Turner, who was tasked to infiltrate and radicalize the far right, speaks at a rally sponsored by the FBI-controlled National Socialist Movement left. goes on here and it says that uh, basically uh, for at least five years and probably more, Turner was paid as an informant and provocateur and, and to employ uh, the world's largest sponsor of terrorism, the federal government, his assignment was to bait, easily influence people with incendiary rhetoric about race and other uh, resentments and re Anyone who is about to take the bait, the Bureau credits Turner with personally bringing in more than 100, quote, extremists to their attention, many of whom uh, uh, were arrested. We have white al-Qaeda targeted as Western governments turn terror apparatus inward, and this was, of course, the whole point. I've been talking about this for over a year now, about everything being set up for uh, uh, mostly white people in America, uh, middle class, that, that don't like what's being done to them. I'm not excluding any other uh, race, such as Mexicans or blacks or Asians, I'm just saying that that is the legitimate target as, quote, extremists or terrorism. Of course, all these uh, articles will be linked in the video description on YouTube, so go and check those out. I recommend it. You can kind of dig in there and get more history on it. Um, these are some significant days. Uh, preparedness Day bombing. The Preparedness Day bombing was a bombing in San Francisco, California, on July 22, 1916, when the city held a parade in honor of preparedness and anticipation of the United States' imminent entry into the world into World War One. So, a uh, suitcase bomb was detonated, killing 10 and wounding 40. And uh, of course, what it was about? Uh, it was about going into war, a war that nobody wanted. So it scared him, right? King David Hotel bombing was an attack carried out by militant right-wing Zionist underground organization. Ergen, King David Hotel in Jerusalem on the 22nd of July, 1946. This was also the day that they went in there and killed Saddam Hussein's sons after um, they were done using him. Then on the 22nd of July, 2005, this Bra Brazilian man uh, was shot in the head several times at the Stockwell Tube Station in London Underground by the London Metropolitan Police after he was misidentified as one of the fugitives involved in the previous day's failed bombing attempts. These events took place after the London bombings. Uh, was a 7-7, which again was a false flag. And on this day, Godfrey of uh, Bulilu was elected king of Jerusalem on July 22, 1099. And this was all about the uh, Crusades. So this has a similar movement with the Crusades movement, Christianity and uh, uh, Islam, famous leader of the First Crusade and the Knights Templar movement, which is interesting because this individual suspect is a Freemason. And at a local level during the Crusades, uh, it happened to be in the Rhineland, attack on Jews in the Rhineland where Ashkenazi Jews come from. That's actually the interpretation. Those are the minority uh, that are basically 
basically, I think, are responsible for carrying out the Holocaust in the uh, World War II. And uh, look at this. This 22nd, today, the 22nd, is the anniversary of what? Deportation from Warsaw Ghetto to uh, Treblinka. So basically the Holocaust. Uh, please join me in part three. I'll finish up with the rest of the news I have. Uh, this is Gigi and I'm Darko. Thank you.